How's it going, guys? So we have a past level question for emergency slash internal medicine for TCK. If you're studying for step one, more of a challenging question, but for TCK, no fucking excuses. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. Really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Link is down below. Find me on Telegram. Recently created a Telegram group and channel. Links are down below. Now let's start the fucking clip. So 60-year-old woman, she's admitted to hospital. She has hypotension or spiritual distress. Her vitals are she's febrile at 101 Fahrenheit, heart rate 110. Her spiritual rate 26, should be 12 to 16 per minute. Low blood pressure 80 on 50. She has a 3 on 6 systolic murmur. Pulmonary artery catheterization shows increased cardiac output and a high normal pulmonary capillary wedge pressure at 13 should be 5 to 16. We look at her bloods. Hemoglobin is normal. 13 to 17.5 is what we expect for non-menstruating women and men. Hers is 13. Leukocytes high at 19,000 per microliter should be 4 to 11,000 per microliter. pH low 7.27 should be 7.35 to 7.45. PCO2 low at 20 millimeters of mercury should be 33 to 44. PO2 low at 65 should be 80 to 100. So before we even get into the answer choices for the mechanism for her respiratory failure, we just observe the acid-base stuff, and it's noted that she will have a metabolic acidosis in this picture. The only way it's possible to have a low pH, but in the context of a, in the setting of a low CO2, is if we have low bicarb. Okay, this is step one level acid-base stuff, which presumably would be due to lactic acidosis causing metabolic acidosis, which can occur in the setting of shock. Okay, super fucking high yield uh, past level uh, info across uh, 2CK in particular. And it's not unique to any one type of shock. Septic, cardiogenic, hypovolemic, okay, even a pulmonary embolism where you have obstructive shock and low blood pressure. If you ever get a question where blood pressure is low and you have a low pH and you're like, hmm, why the fuck's the pH low? It's low bicarb due to lactic acidosis, okay? Now, this patient clearly has septic shock. That's the past level initial uh, point, uh, starting point in terms of addressing this question. I mean, there's uh, not just the low blood pressure, but we've got a fever and we have high cardiac output, okay? In cardiogenic and hypovolemic shock, we have low cardiac output. Pulmonary capillary wedge pressure is normal. Okay, I mean, if we have high, if we have high pulmonary capillary wedge pressure, that's cardiogenic shock, such as due to an MI. Okay, so it's to my observation, students just often don't retain slash understand PCWP. I can't tell you how fucking high yield this is on NBME material. Okay, for step one and step two, high PCWP equals cardiogenic shock. Okay, if PCWP is not high. It just means not cardiogenic shock. You don't have to worry about whether PCWP is low or normal, okay? It's just, is it high? Yes, cardiogenic shock. Not high, not cardiogenic shock. So clearly we have septic shock here, all right? Now we have respiratory failure. Let's just walk through the answer choices. Choice A, bicuspid aortic valve, which would cause aortic stenosis. Wrong fucking answer. Now you say, well, I don't get it. Why is there a three on six murmur? It's just a flow murmur, okay? It's a functional murmur. I've made other clips on this stuff where in the setting of high heart rate, you have increased flow across either the pulmonic or aortic valve, and you can get a one to three on six systolic murmur. It will abate. It will go away as heart rate drops back down. That's why it's called a functional murmur, okay? Now, you can see it in the setting of severe anemia where heart rate goes up to compensate, uh, trauma, sepsis, infections, okay? especially in pediatrics, flow murmurs, super fucking high yield. You're going to see them a lot. It doesn't mean there's a pediatric valvular abnormality or congenital valvular abnormality. It's just a flow murmur. So bicuspid aortic valve, wrong fucking answer, as I just said. Uh, next answer, decreased hypoxic drive, wrong answer. I mean, the notion that we could have, for example, CO COPD patients who are on oxygen and then that could res uh, suppress their respiratory drive. It's a bunch of nonsense for USMLE. I've never seen it show up on any NBME material. Okay, this notion of hypoxic drive. Wrong fucking answer. Uh, next answer, decreased myocardial contractility. This is wrong because, as I just fucking said, we have a normal pulmonary capillary wedge pressure here. All right. If they wanted decreased myocardial contractility, where we have, i.e., left heart failure, then we have an increased PCWP. Okay. That's the value of understanding PCWP. You can immediate, immediately eliminate cardiogenic shock type answers. Next answer decreased pulmonary arterial pressure. 
this is just a distractor that doesn't really have any uh, application here, okay? I mean, if we were to contemplate the notion of uh, how does pulmonary you know, pressure actually change in this setting, we know PCBP is not elevated, but is it low, is it high? I mean, is that related to the respiratory failure? It's not, okay? I mean, we don't immediately dismiss it, but it's just not a good answer. It doesn't explain anything for us, and we're just gonna keep going through the answer choices, okay? Next answer, increased vascular permeability is the correct answer. Now there's essentially two points here. Number one, in the setting of sepsis, okay, septic shock or just where we have low blood pressure or just sepsis in general, you need to know, at least for step one, that IL-1 is responsible for the fever. TNF-alpha is responsible for increased vascular permeability and hypotension, okay? So we are we are going to have TNF alpha release with increased vascular permeability in septic shock slash just sepsis in general. And that's the first point. The second point is ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome. I mean, sepsis is a major cause of that. So this is presumably ARDS. We don't have chest x-ray findings showing us bilateral infiltrates, etc. Question didn't emphasize that, but we have low oxygen in the setting of sepsis, and we know increased vascular permeability will occur in sepsis, so this is presumably ARDS, okay? Now, ventilatory insufficiency, whilst incorrect, is a very fucking high-yield answer for many 2CK questions. Now, what you immediately need to look at is just the CO2, okay? So it's the CO2, 20. I'm pointing to the oxygen, but you're you're looking at the CO2 here, and you can see it's low. In ventilatory insufficiency, CO2 is going to be high, okay? So they don't have to emphasize that OMG, the patients on opioids, benzos, barbiturates, etc. There doesn't have to be an overt etiology for why the patient not, might not be breathing. They can even say uh, the patient's on an actual ventilator in hospital and the CO2 is high. What you need to know is that if the patient is adequately breathing, then CO2 should not be high, okay? So you can immediately eliminate ventilatory insufficiency if you look at the CO2 in a question and it's not elevated. This is a very 2CK uh, vignette, okay? I mean, we have to go through a bunch of lab values here and, you know, kind of eliminate the answers. As I started off by saying, it's past level, okay? I mean, there's a little bit of complexity here, uh, but this is pretty standard mechanism you need to be aware of. You know the deal. I'm going to continue making more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.